Chapter 4, Section 3, Handling Exceptions. Unfortunately, we very often encounter the situation that there is an exception in the process. It is good to anticipate that certain exceptions can happen. One way to think about an exception is that a process may lead to a negative outcome. Here in this example, we look at a replenishment order and that this order is potentially not fulfilled. We can highlight this undesired outcome by using a so-called process abortion. Process abortion is represented by an end event with a filled black circle. The same symbol is also used to indicate that when it is reached, we cancel the overall process instance that we are currently working on. But there's more. There are various types of exceptions that we can think of. We can distinguish at least three different types. We may want to represent internal exceptions. Here, something goes wrong with what we are doing internally. It may be that there are external exceptions. These may be situations where somebody else notifies us that we have, for example, to take into account a cancellation. And there may be timeouts. All of these exceptions can be represented by so-called boundary events. These are intermediate events that are attached to an activity. If an exception happens, the corresponding boundary event is used to indicate how we deal with it. Let's look at some examples. Consider the purchase order that you see here. When a purchase order is received, it is registered. And then we handle the purchase order. If it is a weekday, we just progress with checking the availability. And we send the purchase order response. In this way, the purchase order is fulfilled. If it is a weekend or a holiday, we have to wait until the next working day. Several exceptions could be associated with this process. Let's look at an internal exception. It may be the case that the items are not available. You see this highlighted with this red circle. This exception is represented by this flash symbol. Here we take the choice. If items are available, we continue. If items are not available, we run into this exception. How is this exception dealt with? We represent a corresponding boundary event with the same name. It is also called items not available. This means that the triggering exception leads to the boundary event and that boundary event is responded by sending a notification. There can also be external exceptions. Let's look at the situation that a change is received for the purchase order. We can also represent this as a boundary event. Now there's no corresponding flowing event internally, but it is associated with a message that we may receive. If that message is received, we can change the purchase order and continue processing. It may also be the case that the purchase order is cancelled. If that is the case, 
to handle the cancellation. Can't you see here that we run into an end event that is called purchase order cancel? This is an abortion that deletes the current process instance. Now let's have a look at our example where we put the internal and the external exceptions together. You see here again, there is the internal exception of items not available, and there are the two external exceptions of purchase order change receipt and purchase order cancel receipt. We can further extend this example. Sometimes there are exceptions that we can directly handle, but they do not change the flow of the process. To this end, we use non-interrupting boundary events. Here you see an example. These non-interrupting boundary events are shown with broken lines in their circles. Here is an envelope that says address change received. If such an address change is received, we update the customer address. The result is that the address is updated, but we don't have to, but we don't have to change the process overall. We simply continue with our processing. Events can also be more complex. Let's look again at the purchase order cancel receipt in the middle of this diagram. Indeed, what happens is the following. We see now that there is a non-interrupting event called cancel receipt. We address this receipt of the cancellation by determining the cancellation penalty and notifying the customer. As a result, the customer may confirm that the order is stopped. Or the customer may reply that the order should continue. If 48 hours elapse and we don't hear from the customer, the purchase order is not canceled. If we receive a request to stop, the purchase order is finally canceled. There is a signal event with the black triangle in the circle that we need to handle. This event is thrown back at the process. It is handled by a corresponding boundary event that is called purchase order to be canceled. We charge the penalty and we handle the purchase order cancellation. As a result, the purchase order is cancelled, here indicated by a process abortion. Sometimes it is possible to express the handling of events by so-called event sub-processes. This is often nicer and easier to read. Have a look here. Different events are being described as event subprocesses and how they are handled. Each event subprocess is highlighted with a dotted line box. The events being mentioned depend on events that occur during the execution of the process. And this is the process in which they are enclosed as sub-processes. You see here, there's an event sub-process that is outside the handling TO sub-process. This is a sub-process that is applicable at any stage of processing. If events occur 
we also often have to compensate activities that have already been executed. Let's look at this example. After a purchase order has been registered, checked, and a response has been sent back, a payment subprocess and a fulfillment subprocess are started. During these two subprocesses, a PO cancellation may be received from the customer. In this case, both subprocesses are stopped and their effects are reverted. How do we represent this in the DMN? Here you see the example with these two subprocesses, payment and fulfillment. You see that each of them has a boundary event with two symbols that look like the playback symbol on your cassette recorders at earlier times. There's also a boundary event for the overall fulfill and pay PO process. It says PO cancel received. If you receive that message, our response is a cancel PO event to be thrown. This event is called by all corresponding activities that have a compensation boundary event with the same name. You see here, payment and fulfillment both have a compensation boundary event called cancel PO. This is now triggered for each of these activities in case they have already been executed. For the payment, it leads to a reimbursement. For the fulfillment, it leads to a goods return. You see that it is required that only one compensate activity must be linked from a catch and compensate event. It is also possible that the compensate activity can be a sub-process. So it may have caught your attention that it is not a simple flow arc that connects the payment and the reimbursement and the fulfillment and the goods return, respectively. That's a dotted line arc. That's a special arc that is associated with compensation. We have seen various types of events in this part. We recall that there are start and end events and there are various types of intermediate events. Catching and throwing, interrupting and non-interrupting. We have seen respective message, timer, signal, error, compensation and terminate events. Not all types of events can be used as start, intermediate, end, catching, throwing, boundary and non-boundary events. You see here those events indicated that are defined by the BPMN specification. 